Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the Two and a Half Cents podcast. And I'm being joined by Sergeant, aka Bradley. How are you doing, man? What's up, brother? How you doing? Doing pretty well. How about you, Chris? I'm doing okay. So uh, a lot has changed in the last week that we've recorded our previous podcast. Um, a lot has changed, especially in the NHL realm. The Vegas Golden Harry Knights has to rub it in. Uh, no, actually, on the contrary, I was actually talking about the Vegas Golden Knights as you were interrupting me. As I was saying, the Vegas Golden Knights have been eliminated by the San Jose Sharks. Um, and Chris's uh, Washington Capitals have also been eliminated by the Carolina Hurricanes. So, the worst team in NHL playoff history. <laughs> uh, say that. They did pretty good this year. They yeah. suck. If there's the only silver lining in this whole playoff debacle is that I know for me oh, and Sarge man. at least, we no longer have to hear you talking about your capitals as being the defending champs. Sarge, what do you think well, about we're, that? We're, we're yes, always we gonna be He's going to keep bringing it up. It doesn't matter how how long it is until they get back in the playoffs or whatever. He's, he's still we were in the up. playoffs, but we have a coach who's in a – incapable of making in-game adjustments and looks like Kevin from the office with about the same IQ apparently <laughs> okay to be fair he looks like Kevin from the office if Kevin went on P90X <laughs> and then quit halfway through he's a terrible coach I'd fire him so and, uh, who wouldn't you fire though Toronto exactly. AHL coach who is a winner he's young <laughs> And that's who I want to be our coach. Oh, so the exact opposite of you. Um, so, <laughs> uh, Sarge, what's been new with your world in the last week? Uh, we'll get to we'll get to the good stuff later on. My all of all three of our teams are out of the playoffs. So that's not a thing anymore. Uh, Steelers picked who I wanted them to pick in the first round. They tend to trade up for them, but yeah. Uh, probably got... worth mentioning to everybody that uh, we are recording right now on the night of April 25th. The, the first round of the draft has uh, officially commenced. Uh, the Ravens got a brand new shiny wide receiver, uh, Marquise Brown, which apparently has some family ties. is a cousin of Antonio Brown. Hopefully he doesn't bring as much baggage with him to Baltimore and certainly not as much of a head case as, as his cousin. But uh, Sarge, what did your team draft? Uh, we drafted Bush, man. He's the uh, the inside linebacker at the school we went to. I was hoping we'd either get him or a good corner, but I didn't think that we would we would trade up for him, and yeah. we did, which what? was excellent. I'm so glad we got a good inside. He's fast, dude. That dude is fast. I'll have to look him up on YouTube. Like I said, I don't know anything about he's these pretty, college players, so um, he's pretty quick. You know, you can literally throw up a name like. Uh, Quentin McQuinton. <laughs> and I'd be like, oh, cool. Let me look him up. Uh, so that's that's good though. That at least your team has, uh, for uh, at least on at face value and on paper, has improved a little bit, even just through one night of the draft. Uh, what about you, Chris? We got Dwayne Haskins, who threw fifty touchdown passes last year for Ohio State. So I think he's going to be outstanding. Okay. And I'm very excited. And uh, we got a edge rusher who I think is going to be good. The only downside is we gave up two seconds to trade back into the first. So, and we need problem is we have nobody for him to throw the ball to. I mean, Paul Richardson's our number one, which is just a joke. And uh, we still need corner help, big time. I'm sure they'll. Uh... They'll address uh, a few of those um, those needs as the draft progresses through the uh, various rounds. Uh, but you say you don't have any more second round picks? No, no we traded it, but we two thirds. So I'm wondering. The problem is, is we can't trade a third and a second and a two thirds trade back into the second this year because we don't have a second next year now. So we'd go first to fourth round, and you can't do that. Okay. Okay. Because I was thinking trade two thirds and get back in the second, but you do that, then you have a first and a fourth next year, or you have to trade somebody, and you know it's so it's it was a steep price to pay, frankly, to get back into the first, but we got a excellent talent. 
Yeah, I'd say safe to say uh, for another year at least, uh, the Washington Capitals are going to be the best team in Washington. <laughs> That's not saying much. Well, we could uh, if we win the cup again next year. Two out of three won't be too bad, and I'll be pretty happy again. That's a that's a big if. Sir. That's a big if. Nothing's guaranteed. Well, if we hire a competent coach and get a defenseman, I I feel pretty good about it. I feel like if they well, hired you as coach and then you fired well, yourself, oh, the world would explode. <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine? Chris is a head coach of a team where he doesn't get to fire anybody. I mean, granted, because he's my friend, I would instantly have to become a fan of that team um, for no reason other than to make sure to tune in every single game just to watch him have blowouts with his uh, his uh, team, his players. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if he threw players out on the ice. You know, and refs <laughs> call him for like eight men on ice. <laughs> no, if I coached anything, it would probably be baseball. Okay, well, oh, then I can good. guarantee then that would be you I would that we not sleep watch through. you. I would not watch you. I would not become a fan of whatever it is you're doing. Well, you'd we... probably, you could watch the highlight videos of me getting ejected. I don't know. Somehow, to me, highlights and baseball sound like an oxymoron. Sarge, am I alone here or what's going on? Yeah, I don't think there's any, th- any such thing as a baseball highlight. <laughs> Because you would probably, uh, you would probably say I'd be ejected out of a majority of the 162 games. Oh, definitely. I mean, I'd say you should be ejected out of a out of a league because the league shouldn't exist. Exactly. It's not even a sport. Well, let's be real. It is. But no, you that. try, you try hitting a uh, baseball that's coming at you 100 miles an hour, and I guarantee you, you'll miss them fall on your ass. Okay. I've got other that, things that going does. in life for me. I can speak English, and I have a very uh, fulfilling job. Uh, so, what's what else has been new with you guys this week? Uh, well, I was trying. I'm trying to save my 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 kid's story till the end. <laughs> no, go for it. Let's hear it. Uh, so, my daughter, I've taken to calling her uh, Pablina Pucaso. She. Uh, she likes to, to, when she's bored in her room, she'll dig into her diaper. Okay, I see where this is going. Yeah, well, this time she just took her diaper off, crapped on the floor, then picked it up and started coloring on the walls with it. And the carpets. Oh, no, her bed. my God. So. That, I guess you weren't too happy. <laughs> I mean, I was at home. My wife had to take care of that, so. There's that. <laughs> well, I guess it was a good thing you were working. Yeah, I guess so. So she was on cleanup duty, literally, <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally. And then there was another thing. One of my kids apparently is a cannibal. She uh, she tries to eat my other daughter's face. Like I come home and there's a bite mark under her eye. Under one of my daughter's eye, where the other one had bit into her. My God, it reminds me so much of that 2011 <laughs> story from Florida, where the guy was all hopped up on bath salts. It's all and, about the Florida man. Well, you know what? Actually, things are changing. If you've noticed in the news, to be fair to uh, Florida men all around the world, uh, it seems like the tides are changing, and it's now California man. Believe it or not. <laughs> there was a Florida man story I saw that I really wanted to mention and it. it's totally escaping my mind uh, before we get into too far into this meme for those of you guys who don't understand Florida man is actually like uh, it's it's an ongoing meme now uh, not on my channel but like just in general and what that pretty much means is you can go into any search engine type the word Florida and man next to each other and look up instantly multiple pages upon pages of weird felonious acts that people somehow tend to commit. You know, things like throwing a pizza pie at the back of someone's head um, after they tell you that they don't love you anymore or something like that. Something weird. It's always something (laughs) weird. Um, But leave it to Florida Man. But like I said... Uh, Florida man is getting relieved of his duties, it seems like, and California man has taken over. 
<laughs> oh, Florida man will never die, sir. Florida man will never die. You know, uh, Florida. One of, Florida my favorite, man. one of my favorite Florida man moments of 2018 uh, was definitely uh, the two guys walking on the bridge, and you can all you can see it on police dash cam. And you can see the the one guy pick up the other dude and throw him clean off the bridge into the water down below, which is like 150 feet down below. And the cops arrest this guy. He's like, what are you arresting me for? What did I do? He's like, you just threw that guy off the bridge. He's like, no, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't do anything. I'm like, my goodness. Here's a genius. Florida man, Florida arrest- man strikes again. Florida man arrested for burglarizing cars in jail parking lot moments after being released. Yeah. Guess you just take him right back in. That's it. <laughs> they didn't have to go far to pick him up. No. Nope. <laughs> you ought to be worried, Sarge. You're you're the one that's living the closest. I mean, Carolina's not that far away. Uh, was... We're still just about halfway up the country. That's true. That's true. You're still at the we're part co- of the country where people drive cars instead of... Oh, I won't get into that meme anyway. Um, we're, we're closer to West Virginia land. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Things get pretty interesting that Bible Belt for sure. I, I've actually, <laughs> I've actually done that road trip a few times back when I lived in uh, Illinois, Chicago, and uh, yeah. Now, there's it, to be fair though, the people are really nice, um, especially the further south you go. Uh, one thing I did notice though, the further and further south I went, I think we drove down through Kansas City. Um, and it's like you just see diversity kind of go away. Um, I'm used to Chicago where it's like a melting pot. And where I'm living right now in Vegas is even more of a melting pot com- in comparison to Chicago. I'd say more so because here in Vegas, it's a vacation town of the entire world. You get people from Kenya to China to Italy, France, all that. But it seems like when I was doing my road trip and heading down south, like diversity kind of ex- goes away, and all you see is blacks and whites. Whoa, whoa, You don't whoa. see – correct me if I'm wrong. The further south you go, do you see that more diversity or less diversity? It's definitely I less, is it not? That. There's less. There's a lot There's less. There's probably less, but you can't call them blacks. What are they? They're colored people. Okay, so now you're comparing or people them to... of people of color. Okay, that PLCs, people of color. Me. Yeah, I know that's that, you know that's <laughs> Sergeant Kicker's social justice warrior. I mean, we've gone through this several times now. This makes three nights in a row. <laughs> He's got to be offended for someone that's not already offended. But anyway, um, exactly. I just realized driving through the <laughs> South, there's whites and blacks. There's no Asians. There's no Europeans. It kind of all goes away. Well, there's uh, some, but they're few and far between. They're few and far between. And and then you encounter rare groups, such as the Mennonites, the Amish, which I will say are the salt of the earth people. Um, we actually pulled over because they had some signs saying that they had some uh, um, all organic fruits and stuff. So I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to patronize them. I'm going to give them money. I'm sure they could use it. Um, and it's, it's so bizarre because I've never dealt with them on, on, on this kind of level face-to-face. I've always read about them or heard them on the news. But actually being face-to-face, it had a pretty nice little setup going. They didn't use any electricity. They were selling all kinds of fruits and like breakfast meats and barbecue meats. And I tried to take a picture of the setup because it was so nice, and there was no electricity used in any part of making this whole this whole rig they had set up. And there were about nine guys chopping away on this one log. Uh, I think they were doing kind of they're setting some uh, burning wood for the kettle. One of them kind of saw me pull out my camera and gave an elbow to the guy next to him. And before I knew it, before I was even able to raise my camera up to take the picture. All nine guys, or however many there were, were covering their faces with their elbows. And it wasn't until afterwards uh, I kind of looked into it, and they believe that they strongly believe against taking pictures. Even so much, even that uh, their driver's license is a is a mock image. It's it's like a blank silhouette. They don't take driver's license photos. They don't take any pictures because they believe that uh, your soul is sucked out into the picture. 
whenever you are uh, captured by a picture. Oh, God. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. So, but honestly, the, the interaction I've had with them, um, again, this was down south. Nothing but positive. Nothing but positive. They're so nice. Um, I don't I don't understand why they get so much flack, but... Well, I'll tell you a funny um, story. I was dry, My aunt and uncle used to live in Dover, and they had a NASCAR race at, called the Dover Downs. And we came back, and then uh, we tried to beat it, but we missed and were during, like, when it was about to start. And there yeah. were Amish people in their horse and buggies with their... Uh, with their race car flags at the uh, at the NASCAR race. Really? Yeah, I kind of found that interesting. Wait, there's Amish flags? No, they they had NASCAR flags in their horse and buggy. They were sitting there to watch the NASCAR race. Oh. You know what? I just kind of found. Oh. I okay. guess they like not sports too. So here's the <laughs> thing. So here's the thing. There's difference between the Amish. And then Mennonites. The Mennonites will use power drills. They will use some electricity. I don't know about watching TV. I don't know how they'd go about watching NASCAR, but they do use some electricity. Whereas the Amish believe in using no electricity. So mm-hmm. they'll, they'll create their own tools, uh, so on and so forth. You know, so I couldn't be Amish because I couldn't deal with no AC. I tell you that. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh, you're not kidding. Yeah, AC. Um, running, running warm water, hot water. Yeah. Uh, another thing that separates the Mennonites from the actual Amish is that uh, they have a ceremony that they do. I think when the kid turns 18, they let him or her leave for five years. Leave the, leave the uh, Mennonite community and go into like general society. And then yeah, let the, don't the Amish do the same thing? Yeah, I don't I think, think so. Do. I'm pretty sure they do. Do they? So, so then they they let the the person their their offspring or whatever decide whether or not they want to enter society or to remain part of the group. Yeah, I think that's I think that's how it works in Amish. But if they yeah. join society, from what I understand, then they're like shunned. They're shunned. Yeah, yeah. they're completely yeah. cut off from the family. Yeah, and be, being shunned is a big deal for them. It's like you can never come back. Right. So you have to make the decision once and for all. I think I'd be shunned. <laughs> <laughs> once I'm sitting in a, once it's ninety five degrees and I'm sit and I'm in my, you know, my uh revolutionary war clothes or <laughs> I'm sitting in a t shirt revolutionary and war clothes and in in a, a in a um air conditioned apartment or house. Yeah, I think I'm gonna choose the air conditioned apartment and house and a t-shirt and jeans. <laughs> Not too long ago, actually, TLC, the Learning Channel, which I remember back when TLC actually had like programming that actually taught you things. But um, TLC actually had a show that failed, but it was up for just a brief time where they actually showed these young people that go out into society uh, and then get hooked on different oh, I vices. That show. They get hooked mm-hmm. on like drugs or alcohol, or or even just, just having electricity. That was enough of a high for them, and it, they went back and it showed how the family just said, "All right, we're done with you. Have a good life." You know, that's yeah, pretty insane well, I to think me. That happens to you. Don't have to be Amish or Mennonite for that to happen. If you have overprotective parents who like, you know, you're not allowed to go out. You're not allowed to use the internet, and there's parents like that. That's you true. know, we complain we complain about our parents at times, but then you hear other kids' stories and you go, My parents were pretty good. Yeah. Um, you know, you see these parents who, you know, once you go to bed, your cell phone has to be in my room and this and that, and they unplug the internet at nine thirty or no, you know, these are it the is kids a little bit who, these are the kids who fail out of college because they don't have social skills and you know, they go crazy at a party because they've never been allowed to live a little. And I'm not saying parents should let teens go get drunk, but you know, they don't let them live at all. So these are the kids who go get wasted every night. They can at college and they fail out. 
first semester. While I do agree with you to a certain extent, I, you know, since neither of us are parents, Sarge is the only parent in here. I think it's good, at least being a child and seeing how my parents treated me. I think it definitely it helps out to see them exercise some form of authority. Uh, in the sense, I'm not saying no structure. Don't yeah, get me wrong. you have, you have saying... to have structure, and I don't mean that you know you have to beat your kids. I mean, I got beat. I'm not. I'm not going to lie. But, oh yeah. <laughs> but I'm not saying you have to beat your kids. But it's simple things like I remember when I first got my driver's license. They're like, all right. At, so it started off with uh, 9 p.m. 9 p.m. is a curfew. Have the car home by nine. And I did that. It was all good. Slowly but surely got bumped up to 10. 10 became 10, 1030. Until one time I, it was supposed to be 1030 and I brought it back at midnight. Well, guess what? We're back at square one now. We're back at 9 p.m. <laughs> you know, sure, at the time it made me really upset because, you know, that's the thing about trust. It takes a while to earn and o- only a moment to, to uh, um, break down. So- break it yeah so you know i didn't get it at the time but i totally would do the same thing with my kids um assuming by the time i have kids we don't have like flying vehicles and and that we're not still we're not inhabiting mars or something yeah, crazy I, like that i will say that what do you say i said that sixteen nine is a little probably give them nine thirty ten to start but same oh. cramp you're given a two th- 2,500 pound vehicle to drive uh, next to people that uh, are also alive. So um, they they wanted me home. You know, they don't want me driving around at nighttime too much. You know, builds it's well, a trust it's building. Especially on weekends when it starts getting late and the yeah. drunk then. Yeah. And, you know, but back when we were young too, there, there wasn't all the tech. There wasn't as much technology. I mean, cell phones were just coming out. There weren't smartphones. Oh yeah. So I, mean, I, I like the way that uh, that Ted Nugent calls cars. He's like, it's a two thousand pound death machine. <laughs> yeah, it is. It absolutely is. Yeah. It is, but you know, I think that you know. Like you said, there has to be rules and structure, but I think there's got to be a balance where you let the kid live a little. Where you sometimes I'm not saying you raise the kid in a totalitarian state. No, no, I'm not saying that you are. I'm just saying that there's got to be a happy medium. Yeah. Where you, and I think the ones who do raise them in totalitarian are the ones I was talking about that kind of go a little overboard when they get to college and they're just so happy to be out from their parents iron fist that they go crazy yeah but the problem is is they fail out and then they're back under the parents iron fist yep <laughs> yep trust me I've, you... I've seen some some good friends go through that you know they're like it couldn't wait till they were 18 Got out on their own, found out what it is to pay taxes, and then went right back with their parents. Mm-hmm. And I mean, there's nothing wrong, you know, if you get a job, it's close to your parents, move in for a little bit. But then it's like you're back in high school, and they're, well, where? I'm going out. Well, where? When will you be home? You know, yeah. you get all those questions again. <laughs> Yeah. There's 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 a point where you go too far with anything. Like you can go too far with giving your kids too much room, or you can go too far with keeping them closed off. Like my yeah, wife has yeah. a friend. I'm not going to name any names because I mean she's never going to listen to this. But there's she wasn't allowed to date until she was out of high school. And okay. Now she has major problems with rejection because she never had to experience it when she was trying to get a boyfriend in high school because. Was allowed to have one, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But then, if you let your kids do whatever the hell they want, then you end up with these teen moms on those on TLC. Yeah, that's why I'm saying you have to have structure, but you have to let them live a little. Where you know, sometimes a minor mistake that's not like life altering. That's Sometimes when you're a kid. That's when that. you're supposed to make those mistakes. That's yeah. when you learn from them. Yeah, yeah. So you learn from them, and then sometimes 
sometimes when you let them do that, then the kid says, hey, my parents aren't such idiots. Or crazy after all. Yeah, because you, know? you have to understand when you're growing up, you're living in a very like yeah. Even when you have some freedom as a kid, but you're still in a very controlled environment. You know, with some sort of degree of variance that you will come home and usually there's going to be one or two parents waiting on you. There, there's going to be dinner on a table, that kind of thing. Um, it's just uh, it's safe. So like, there's a safety net system. Where if you fail, you don't fall too far. There's a safety net where they catch you and be like, all right, here's where you went wrong. Probably want to go do this in the future to avoid what happened today. Kind of that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, So. Yeah. And even, and even if you get in legal trouble, a lot of times, unless it's like heinous, that's why they expunge your record. Because they say, hey, kids are stupid. Kids make mistakes. They don't want your life ruined for, you know drinking a beer or you know smoking a joint yeah one two they don't want to ruin your life right so you know they give you a small slap on the wrist and expunge the record even if you steal from like a department store usually you get a slap on the wrist and they expunge your record yeah and i I think it's something like under the age of 15 or something as long as it's not a person crime meaning like you don't stab someone or shoot someone but like you're saying if it's like a, a burglary or uh, some kind of like mm-hmm. property crime, then you, yeah. your, your record's going to be expunged. That w- shouldn't be held against you uh, when you're applying for a job later on as an adult in your life or or if you're applying for a loan because all of those things, mm-hmm. jobs, loans, everything nowadays requires a background check. And, uh, I, you know, you're right. It should not appear. A screw up as a kid, especially as a juvenile, should definitely not impact your adult life. Now, again, that's barring the person crimes, because how many times have we seen a 15, 16, 17-year-old get tried as an adult in a court for murder, you know? Look, look well, at these and I don't blame you know? the prosecutor for doing it, to be honest with you. I mean... Yeah, I mean, the, at, the, at the end of the day, there's a victim, right? Whereas with the property yeah. crimes, yeah, there's a victim... And yeah, they probably feel a little bit violated, but everyone's gonna go home alive, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's but, like you know, it's like fist fight compared to a gunfight. Yeah, you exactly. Have a fist fight and cut and live through it. You're Everybody gonna have a gunfight. Somebody's probably gonna die. Yeah. Yeah. If you steal a hat or a pair of shoes from a store, it's inconvenient from the store, but that's not a big. In the grand scheme of things, it's a drop in the bucket. Exactly. But, you yeah. should, but it should be discouraged and you should be punished. But, you know, you and don't want Not so wanna... much punishment, but just like a realization of what you did was wrong. So a lot of these, yeah. I'm really a big fan of, um, they, they no longer do the show, um, Scared Straight. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. I, think it was, I think it was opening. I think sometimes they went too far with the kids where, you know. You yeah, have... but they learned. If you if you look at the end of the episode, usually the final ten episode, ten minutes of the hour long episode, is yeah. like the kids no, talking I think about how much they've too. changed. So, but the what, only thing I'm saying is, you know, you didn't need the forty year old screaming in the twelve year old's face for 15, 20 minutes. I think. Okay, a but minutes, here's the thing. Here's the, the thing. Bikes. They made these kids a deal. At least they made a deal with their parents. So I actually um, look read into it, and so the deal is. They offer to parents because um, they're still the legal guardians. These are all juveniles. That's why they're not in jail. Um, so they were given options. Either they could do community service, which they go around for like something like 150 hours or 250 hours, go around parks, clean up garbage, or they could spend a day or two or whatever it is. I think it's usually two days. In prison, in safety, you know, safety enclosures, but they spend those two days in prison with people who actually got in trouble for like real stuff, like like homicides and and burglaries with uh, decedents and all that kind of thing. Um, It's it's amazing to see these juveniles like break down like almost immediately. They go from that that hard exterior, that hard shell. Breaks down pretty quickly the first time yep. one of those inmates calls them an MFer and they're not able to do something about it. 
you know? Yeah. yeah. So it's like... Yeah, because yeah, guess... if it's their friend Tommy, they just tell him to shut the F up and punch him and, yeah. you know... Yeah. But would you but be surprised if that. I told you that a lot of um, uh, state counties are, are doing away with, or either that or have completely gone away from the uh, scared straight program uh, because they thought it was, um, it was, uh, what's the word? Not offensive, but emotionally. It, it was emotionally yeah, disturbing base. to yeah. the, the kids that went through it. It's like, yeah, that's kind of the point. Yeah. The only thing I was saying, and I'm not saying it is a problem, I, I like the program, is sometimes I think to just have the kid there and the guy's just screaming and screaming for a half hour, 45 minutes, you know, you can, you can get the same point across in 15 minutes, you know? Yeah. And that's all I'm saying. And, you know, I don't know. But I think it's a good program, and I, I think they should keep it because some – these kids are one step away from being that person. Yeah. I mean, it's another thing where you can go too far with it or you can not go far enough. Yeah. If you don't scare the kid enough, I mean, every episode of that show that Raven was talking about, there's always one that goes right back to his old ways because he didn't get the point. <laughs> but uh, there's always, but the majority of them turn their life around a little bit, at least for a little while, long enough for them to be able to record the, uh, what happened next thing. Right. I remember, um, I remember one of the, uh, you know, those judge Judy spinoff shows. There was one judge who parents would like that. She did lawsuits too, but parents would bring their troubled kids to her and she would send them to like the same thing. And like, I think like out of the 10 episodes, I saw that like nine of them turned their life around and like one, uh, one like kind of just was a lost cause. Well, I mean, it to me, this is coming from somebody who supports the military wholeheartedly. I have no problems with anybody in the military, unless you're a marine. Just kidding. Just, just kidding. <laughs> um, you mean you mean not the sailors? <laughs> oh, I mean somebody's got to drive the boat. Oh God. Um, <laughs> the best way to change change a kid's aspect on life and how they how they act is make them join the military. If if a if a minor who's over like sixteen or something mm-hmm. if it's a felony that's not like murder or rape or something. Right. Like if they get busted for drugs or some some stupid some stupid misdemeanor. Stupid. No, if they get a felony, but it's not like a, a violent non-violent felony, felony. Instead of sending them to prison or juvie and having them just live in hell for the next couple years, make them join the army. Well, the only problem I have with that is if if we're in like a war time or something, and their heart's not in it, I don't want them on the front lines having okay. my back. They don't have to be on the front lines if they don't want to be. If they don't, if they don't want to be a soldier, but they still have to be in the military. There's other jobs in the military they could do. You don't see a whole lot of supply guys out on the front lines. I get it, but they're, you know. I'm actually going to second what Sarge says because um, a lot of people, a lot of kids, a lot of these kids we're talking about, like, they're high school age kids. So, like, they don't really have a direction with where they want to go in life. Um, A lot of them don't even graduate. So, yeah, I think uh, going to the Army or Armed Services would be great especially since uh i think they're still doing full covered uh tuition if you do decide to go to school the gi bill yeah Yeah, you still get the gi bill yeah so you know once they're in the military uh they're around other people who are hopefully like-minded uh around the same age you kind of get a feel for what you want to do in life and then that way you can get a start going to college if you so choose to um to build your own enterprise whether you want to be an entrepreneur or to go into the workforce you know, the better, uh, best prepare yourself for that. Yeah. And the ROTC program is a great program for oh, yeah. uh, people who, because it, it forces you to have, be, have a routine, schedule, discipline. Yeah. And... I, I could not figure out what it was when I was in, uh, 
in high school, but there was this one kid who would always show up early and be the last one to leave, and he'd always have uh, military fatigues on. You know, we're like, all right, this kid's a nerd, and he's dressing like this because he wants to be someone he's not. But <laughs> that was before I knew what ROTC was. And this guy, literally, the week of graduation, like Monday we graduated, by Friday he was already gone. Well, I mean, that's not even ROTC. You're not in the Army yet. That's that's JROTC. JROTC, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, like so he was off to basic. He was off to basic like three days after you graduated, four days? Yeah, wow. pretty much. Like right after graduation, I saw, you know, um, I saw that people were talking about him and they're like, hey, do you know he actually left? We're like, no way, he's for real? Like he was actually military? <laughs> he wasn't wow. just dressing like that? Well, I have respect for him because, you know, anybody who's going to fight for our country and. Absolutely. You know, do that. I think it's admirable. But my only thing is. I don't want somebody in the military if they're not going to have their heart in it and do a half-assed job. That's my only... Yeah, I mean, Let me I, tell you I, something. Most of the people in the Army, after they're in, they don't want to be there. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I totally get it. But but if you force them in... I mean, if, if it's go to jail or join the Army, they're going to join the Army. I get it. But, you know, I, I just don't want them... It, that's my only qualm. Sorry, is, are, is there is there psychological exams or background checks for people who are interested in enlisting? Yes, you have to take a psych eval and you have to take a physical evaluation. So okay, they don't just let anybody in. You have to be evaluated first. Oh right. no, I, I I get it. I get it. I'm just saying, you know, if if the guy is just like, I don't know. I, I support anyone who's in the military. Oh yeah, obviously. same here. I'm I'm a huge supporter. Uh, and, and unlike Sarge, I actually view sailors as actual servicemen too. Um, I didn't say anything about sailors. You're the one that brought sailors up. <laughs> I know. I was talking about Marines. Are you? Hoorah. Uh, well, do you subscribe to the Uncle Sam's misguided children uh, mantra? Which would be why I'm not familiar with it. USMC Uncle yeah, Sam's USMC. misguided. Children. For Uncle Sam's oh Mr. no, I, no! I, I'm I'm a big fan of the Marine Corps. I think they're okay. They're okay by me. So, <laughs> so um, the army. You know, what U.S. Army stands for spelled backwards. What? Yes, my retarded ass signed up. Nice, <laughs> nice. Yeah, See, I, mean, I could, I could rag on my own branch. I hear you. Yeah, yeah. I I, <laughs> I support anybody who, like Chris said is willing to put their own life on the line so I can continue to, you know, live my life at least a little bit more comfortably, not have to worry about airstrikes or, you know, things that these third world countries have to deal with on a daily basis, you know? So yeah, I definitely appreciate you guys. If you, uh, especially Sarge, cause that's why I always call him Sarge, you know, it's not only is his name, but I, I appreciate him for, uh, for the service he put in. He's not active anymore, but that doesn't take away from what he put, the fourth, uh, however many years back. So, well, I'll always be a veteran. So, yeah, you know, we, yeah, we can always it's, give him our it's, gratitude. It's like I always say: if you can't be an athlete, be an athletic supporter. Exactly, and you know, yeah. as a former uh, serviceman, you can always you're always guaranteed to get a discount at Denny's. So, enjoy those flapjacks. Do you get a discount at Denny's? Uh, I think so. As a military, I'm pretty sure you do. You get a discount in a lot of places. I get a discount at Home Depot. I have, I use that to my advantage a lot. <laughs> what do you do? Pull out your DD14 card. Be like, all right, no, I'm here. Just, I have I have a uh, my my ID still, so I just pull that out. Double R just flashes his I FBI ID. I'm says, not. Yeah, I need of this. FBI. I need this for. Throws out his FBI badge and they just give him what he wants. Yeah, exactly. So no wonder he has so much money to, you know. We went over this in the previous podcast. I'm not an FBI agent. You are definitely in the FBI. If you weren't in the FBI, you could say that you were the FBI. <laughs> okay, I'm in the FBI. Does that make it better? No, well, he's finally admitted. Now you're just saying it because I told you you can't say it because you're you the guys. FBI. I hate you guys so much. <laughs> he just he he lifts his uh, 
uh, shirt to show his gun holsters and says, yeah, I need this with his FBI credentials. Chris, I think yes, you sir? watch entirely too much Law & Order. Yes, sir. Does he watch Law & Order? I was a criminal justice major, dude. I know how it works. <laughs> <laughs> just like when I saw the, okay. just like when I saw the, uh, Chris takes cop a couple of classes and, then, and now he's a big expert on things. Not a couple classes. Is let's he not? Try, let's try four years of classes. Just like when I saw the cop car outside Dunkin' Donuts today and I said, oh, double R's in town. Oh my God. <laughs> I, saw that DM. Local PD. I saw that DM you sent me with the donuts and I, I didn't even want to <laughs> respond to it. But that was actually funny. So. <laughs> And let me just preface this that I don't think cops are fat, lazy donut eaters. It was a joke. It's a joke. I mean, yeah. you, you you might still think cops are fat, lazy donut eaters. We don't know. I don't. Do, don't so, you? The, I mean, the way it works, I think, in law enforcement is similar I to don't. what Sarge said with the, the armed forces. Like, a lot of guys, once they're in, as far as the military goes, like, they don't want to be there. But as far as like law enforcement, you're you're like a nine or nine to twelve months worth of an academy where he kind of beat you into shape, and then once you're done, you're like, all right, I'm gonna let myself go. That's how you see these fat cops, you know, that are the same length sideways as they are up and down. You know, it's uh, it really I mean, it's, it's not even that in the army. In the army, you have people that love it, you have people that don't. Yeah. It's like anywhere else, but um. Me personally, in the in the job that I was in, there was way too much politics for me to want to keep being a part of it. And I I get that and I respect that, yeah. But you know, I, there's really politics in every uh, um, place. You know, even in my uh, church when I was on the board at my church, there was a lot more politics than you would think would go on in a church because. You had to run it like a business. Yeah. You know? There's elders and staff committees. Yeah, I get it. And then, and sometimes you take a vote and you couldn't believe what you were voting on, but, you know, you did it. <laughs> well. But it just goes to show that even in a church where, you know, it should be about God and that, that politics can rear its ugly head yeah I'm not a big fan I'm not a big fan of politics anywhere uh, where it shouldn't be you know no I'm not either but you know it, it, it's like if I have reality. to go to it fine like if I'm intentionally going to like Fox News or whatever else uh, news page I'm going to I'm intentionally going to it but if you bring it to me like I, I don't want to see it like if I'm interested, yeah. I'll seek it out myself, but don't force it. Don't, don't, don't treat me like a bad dog and rub my face in it. You know, like that's, that's not cool. Is it not though? Is it not what? Is it not cool? It's not cool. No. And that goes with a lot of things. Like you like something great, but don't, don't push it onto people. Um, don't force it on them. Don't, don't force it down their neck or anything like that. Just let them, let people live, man. Like live and let live. What's the, 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 the famous saying, live and let live. I don't, I'm not actually, trying to... actually, that's a song. Well, whatever. You live know what and I'm let saying? die. I, I, you know what? I would probably let you die. I'm just kidding. No, I wouldn't. I'd watch though. I'd record it. You'd probably make, probably would. Probably makes for some good content. Um, it's funny enough. It might resurrect my channel from the dead, but, um, yeah, so uh, I love the way you say your channel's dead. Mine hasn't even started yet. It is. I, oh, I you're mean, one of the, you're one of those people guys, that's like, oh, I don't have a million viewers, so my channel's dead. Guys, Sergeant Kicker's YouTube channel is in the description of this podcast. Um, please go and show him some support. Uh, subscribe to him if you haven't already. He's trying to get monetized on there. He's really close, actually. I'm pretty sure. Um, if no, you keep, I'm not. I'm if, nowhere near a thousand keep, subs. No, I'm saying if you keep growing the way you are, I think it's it's a good uh, trend that's being set over there. So, guys, please make sure uh, you go ahead and um, follow Chris, 
but also follow Sarge and subscribe to his YouTube channel. Uh, that is all going to be down in the description below. Also, uh, we're thinking maybe next week or the week afterwards, um, we are going to start implementing some guest call-ins. So uh, if you're interested, definitely leave a comment on this podcast. Number one, that you watched it or listened to it. Number two, if you're interested in being uh, on the podcast so you can join in on whatever topic we're talking about next week, definitely uh, leave that comment below too. We'll get you invited on over and we'll let you know exactly yeah. what time to be on discord so that we can pop you right back into the podcast so that's yeah, gonna do it for us want to do a guest list yeah yeah exactly we're gonna put together a, a nice and organized guest list so that's gonna do it for us this week uh it's gonna be me double r sarge and chris checking on out and we will catch you next week for episode is it five or four now five right this yeah. This next week will be five. six. I keep forgetting. Next okay. week will be six. Next week will be six. So we'll be joining you next week for episode six of the podcast. Good night. Good night. Go Steelers. <laughs>